All right. I don't think you guys understand. Well, first of all, I hope everyone is well. I did not get a chance to do link click, link clink. I keep doing link clink. What is link clink? Clink a word? Clink or clink and clack? Link click. What the fuck is wrong with me? Anyways, link, link click. Um, I didn't get a chance to watch season two yet, so you're going to have to give me some more time. I struggle to make this list. Um, out of every list that I make, what I generally do is I write down every comic book that I can kind of think of in general, even if I don't love it, love it, love it, or like game for any list that I make. Then I'll order like 50. Then I cut the 50 to 40. Then I cut the 40 to like 32. And then I try to order it to some degree. I usually know my top like 1 to 10. That's always concrete. It's like 11 to 30. That's kind of hard to do. And I left and I had to end up making an executive decision. And I don't have any rules necessarily for this, but it might shock you that you're not going to see a lot of Marvel or DC, if any. It might shock you. Um, most of the stuff that I put on here are independent comics for the most part because they are actually my favorite stories uh, that come from the graphic novel um, around Holy Link is crazy. Yes, sir. Mid Hero from Jump Comics is truly a comic of all time. I don't, I don't have any beef with my hero, so I'm okay with that. But yeah. So with that. We're going to get into my uh, 30 favorite comic books. I do have a bunch of notes on here. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm like reading off, off, of off of articles and stuff that I made before because I've, I've spoken when I was kind of starting off my journalism and writing stuff. And the thing that I um, wrote the most about were image comics because I was trying to get people to stop like caring about the big two so much. Without further ado, say hi to YouTube. This will be on YouTube later. And we'll be starting with my honorable mention, which is Black Science. Now, Black Science is by um, Rick Remender. If you are, if you don't, if you're not familiar with Rick Remender's writing, he's a guy who writes Deadly Class. He also writes Low. He also writes um, what was that? Is this Strange Girl? It was the series where like the world ends, like the Rapture happens, and just, like there's like demons on Earth, and like he's like the last one left. So this is one of his stories. It's one of my least favorite stories from him. But here's the thing. I know the concept of the multiverse and multiversal stories have gotten very popular over the last, let's, I'm going to say, three years or so, right? But this is something that I, I have always dealt with my entire life. The concept of parallel universes, the many world interpretation theories, pocket dimensions, X, Y, and Z is not new to me at all. This is a multiverse story. However, I actually think multiverse stories are very, when they're very well done, are good at getting characters to explore themselves and understand versions of themselves that they, that they never became. Like, wow, when this major event happened to me, if I reacted like this instead of this, I would have became this version of myself who's an evil monster. But because I didn't, I'm a quote-unquote hero. So I think it's one of the better multiverse stories that I've ever experienced. So Black Science is my honorable mention. And we're going to start off with something... You might not be shocked. You might be shocked to see this if you're a comic book person, because the new 52 is not particularly beloved by most people. But I actually think Gail Simone's run. This is before Bab Star took it over with Batgirl from Burnside, which I think her artwork's really good. She did like Mortar Crush. I think no, she doesn't no, she doesn't draw Snow Girl. I don't think so. That's someone else. But I think she does Mortar Crush, if I remember correctly. Um, yes. I thought Gail Simone's run of Batgirl was very interesting. Now, personally, I know a lot of people like Oracle. Um, I don't, it's not like I dislike Oracle, but I like the idea that um, Barbara Gordon could just run around, fight, jump, and do things of that nature. And then the struggle that she has with her dad because she's a vigilante keeping something away from her father who is the police commissioner of gotham and i thought she told that line and explored all the relationships and her superhero crime fighting at an extremely high level i was very disappointed when it went away but gail simone is a very is a talented writer that i have a tremendous amount of respect for she's awesome so Jonathan Hickman's Avengers, you Avengers isn't on here. Interesting, interesting. I, I don't even have the Jonathan Hickman run for um Fantastic Four, which is one of my favorites. But I think next next year, I'm gonna do for the solo ones that I do, I'm gonna do fifties. And doing fifties will allow me to um to get more stuff in there. So just kind of bear with me for now. But yeah, I don't got some Jonathan Hickman runs on here, but I got back a uh, Batgirl um new fifty two. So next is Skyward. Now, Skyward's super interesting to me. Skyward is one of those short three, it's like three volumes, if I remember correctly. Fortunately, I know what's buried behind myself, so I'm not pulling it out. And 
to make a long story short, I think the thing that I struggle with with doing these is I want to make it enticing to new people to read and come into, but I don't want to spoil anything major. Because one thing I hate is someone's like, hey, Naya, watch this show. What's it about? And you start telling me things that happened in the show. I want a general synopsis. I hate people go like, oh, you should watch One Piece. Why? Well, like, it's a story, and then, like, you know, he gets a devil fruit, and then he, like, can't swim, and then he fights this clown guy. Because, like, you're telling me what happens. You're not explaining the synopsis. If you say it is a story about a about a about um a rookie pirate who wants to become something called the Pirate King who attained felth, women, power, felth, felth, wealth, fame, and felth, wealth, fame, and power, and wants to become the Pirate King, that's enough for me. You don't have to be like, but there's more to it. Duh. Every story does that. I hate people do that. Like, Naruto wants to become the ninja president. But there's like more things that happen. Every story is like that. There's a there's generally a simple synopsis that describes the central plot, and then there's subplots and character arcs and things that inter intermingle with it. So you don't have to do that. Anyways, to make a long story short. This is the story about a girl. I think her name was Willie. I really wish I really remembered her name. I, I I haven't actually read this since I finished it back in like 2018, whenever it was. It's me and my homies trying to get healthy. <laughs> oh my God. I hate when I start combining. This is a new problem that I've had like the last two years. But anyways, there's something that goes wrong. And basically, gravity on Earth is extremely light. Which means the sky kills. You jump too high. You have nothing to tether you to the ground. You will float out of orbit and die in space. Gravity's fucked in this world. The The main character, her father is one of the scientists that kind of basically is, you could say, is loosely, loosely responsible for this. And this is her story of navigating through that world and trying to find a way to make Earth normal again. Um, in this world, people have learned to basically live with the fact that gravity is, is the way that it is with gravity boots and items and stuff like that. Some people are very scared. Don't leave the house. Always make sure there's something above them. And it's really, really, really cool. It's not very long. It's already complete. I believe it's about three volumes. A volume is usually about four to six issues. Issues are about 19 pages on average. It's not a, it's not a hard read, but I think it's really, really fantastic. You can, you can kind of see here in the, in the, in the um, image, things are floating upwards. It's a super dope comic, so yeah. Um, hey Naya, you should play Honkai. The stories about lesbians fighting against the monsters and trying to stop the end of the world. <laughs> she, I won't leave the house either. I'll get some gravity boots, some he hold a heavy rock, <laughs> keep myself tethered to the ground. Um, is the is the final chapter called Earthward? Then <laughs> I kind of that'd be funny. I don't think that the chapter is called that. If the, if there was a uh, a chapter for it, this is my um. My mecha pick, Met Cadet U. Let me just uh, go into my archives here. I think I have um, a note for this here. If I don't, I'll have to go off the top. Because this is another thing that I've, when I finished it, I haven't revisited it yet. Okay, well, I think I think I took off the top of this one. That's fine. Okay, so U is kind of like a, a poor, the poor son of a janitor. That, and in this world, there's like, alien creatures that come to attack the earth and people who pilot sentient robots in order to fight them and he's kind of gets he kind of gets picked on whatever 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 long story short he gets his own robot to pilot but because of his low status and kind of no training with it it still causes issues and people don't respect him and don't think he has the right to actually like pilot one and everything it's a very it's another very short one i think it's th this is like 20 i think it's like 20 issues at max at max at best and i don't want to spoil anything else but if you like robots and you want to see a giant robot fight off like you know stuff do this but um, it's really cool i think what makes this int more interesting than some of the mecha stuff that i read is that the robots are kind of sentient with their own feelings and whatnot you have to like bond with it it's not just like a machine that you just press the button shoot the laser like it, it's, it's living and breathing so shout out to met cadet you that's really good you might you might recognize black sad because black sad has this like um own video game that came out i don't know how popular it is but a lot of people played the wolf of, uh, the wolf the wolf among us which where you play as a uh, bigsby wolf and that's actually from fables fables is a very elaborate interconnected not convoluted, but decently complex um, comic book series. So you might recognize John Blackside from here. And I've spoken about him a few times in passing, but this is like a, a detective series. Um, I kind of I want to use something that you guys might be able to remember and 
keep it general. So if you know Zootopia, Zootopia tried to kind of tackle the concept of discrimination and racism and whatnot, you know, judging people by immutable characteristics, I think with the carnivores and the herbivores, maybe and omnivores. I can't remember the movie that well. I didn't think it did a great job doing that. But this story has something similar that way with like white fur and black fur related animals. He's a detective. It's an anthology essentially of him solving various cases and then dealing with the things in his personal life. It's like a, it's a noir series. Like the dude is a, det- a black Panther detective and he's going around solving crimes, trying to uncover mysteries. I think it's super dope. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. So yeah. The only mech I ever liked was Code Geass. I, uh, Code Geass, I don't like that much. I, I actually like the, Agi- the Akito the Exiled OVA a lot. Um, but I'm with you. Mecha's not the um, a series or genre that I gravitate to, but I've learned to like it over the years. I have a lot that I like. I like the um, what's, uh, Gundam Sea Destiny. I like the um, Neon Genesis, Gurren Lagann, Akito the Exile, a Mecha that you obviously some other ones. So yeah, sentient mechas. So like Zord from Power Rangers. I got you, got you. Okay, so I guess Zords. Yeah, there, there you go. I don't watch Power Rangers. So yeah, I hated Fables. The game was good, but the comic lost me after issue one. Well, I feel like I feel like you can't say you hated Fables if you only read one issue. You don't you, you don't know anything about Fables. What I would say is like I just reword that. I would just say. The first issue of Fables did nothing to entice me to keep reading it. I can't say, like, I hate Epo. I've read, like, 80 Epo chapters. I know nothing about the series. What I can tell you was I just kind of, like, fell off, you know? But fair enough. This this does sound interesting, though. Yeah, give give Black Side a shot, man. It's super dope. Um, John is my guy. He's super cool. Um... Yeah, there's no humans in this though, bitch. Everything, everyone is an anthropomorphic animal, and it de- it deals with um, various cases. So yeah, give it a give it a look, see, give it a shot. Let's scroll down to, uh, oh yes, <laughs> killer be killed. How best to describe killer be killed is is the question. Hmm. Do I have a thing here? I don't remember if I ever covered killer be killed in a article or whatever. Because I'm I'm somewhat relying on my articles to carry me a little bit, because I I remember that there's 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 this this thing that possesses him and he has to kill certain like people or bad guys and or criminals, and if he doesn't do it, long story short, that thing will basically consume him and kill him. Simi has also read this. I don't know if he's in here. He might be able to back me up because I don't remember everything about it. Because again, some of these you have to understand. I like them a lot, but when I completed them. I never read them again, and I don't actually own Kill Kill or Be Killed. I don't think I. I don't think I. I don't. Yeah, I don't think I have one here. That's okay. This is the last one that I've checked. I used to write so many comic book articles. Jesus Christ! Oh, I do have. Okay, so so Kill or Be Killed is a comic book written by Ed Brubaker, drawn by Sean Phillips. I love Sean Phillips' art. Um, art. He's very good at with like. This. I can't explain it. It's the way he shades certain things, and the way like he the way he uses black. <laughs> I'm a Ichibe black, you know, um, gimmick. Um, and with also with, um, Elizabeth Brett Weiser as a colorist. So the breast cynical 28 year old heartbroken man fails at a suicide attempt. He's been plagued by a demon that saves his life, but to continue living, he must murder a person a month, essentially. And the main character becomes physically ill if he doesn't kill. So what is he to do? And that's the kind of premise of the series. It's it's interesting. It just sounds like, I don't know, like white man kill and shoot people, but it's super dope. I, I like it. It's, it's good. So yeah. I read Fables, I like issue one, but I felt Fables became so convoluted and got lost in the sauce. I started reading it after we found out about the home. So wait, so you read past issue one. Did you mean volume one? Is that good deals, cat? <laughs> no, it's not. Um, yeah, I mean, I like Fables. Fables is not something, it's not one of my favorites. So I like, I, I'm cool with you not liking it. I'm not a Fables defender, you know, like Fables is cool, but like, I don't give up for Fables. <laughs> it's fine if you don't like it. Um, again, fables is not is something that I haven't revisited in a long time. And like you said, there's so many series, so many spin-offs, so many whatever the hell's for that. So yeah. Paper Girls is written by um Brian K. Vaughn, who also writes uh, I think he's Canadian actually. Is he Canadian? I also forget if it's him or Fiona. I think he's Canadian. But um he's a writer for um Saga, if you don't know that. Um it's illustrated by Cliff Chiang. Um, this narrative follows 
four 12 year old girls who are suddenly visited by some supernatural forces from the future and basically they have to survive what's happening if i remember correctly this story was kind of loosely defined as i think it was what's that movie where they find a dead body oh is this it's not stand by me what the fuck is that movie called where the kids find a dead body by the, like a lake or something. I think it was, it was like Stand by Me meets something else. I can't remember what the movie was called. I, I'm not a I'm not a film expert, unfortunately. I don't watch a lot of cinema movies, but there's a lot of um supernatural alien timey wimey shenanigans at this, and they were just four regular delivery delivery girls that got thrust into this world. It's about thirty issues, if I remember correctly. Artwork's good. I think their writing is good. I think the dynamic between the four the four main characters is very solid. Their interpersonal inter interpersonal interpersonal relationships are really solid. And you know me, I'm a character person, so I like the the the, the girl with the cigarette in their mouth. <laughs> Check twelve smoking cigarettes. This is crazy, crazy. But yeah, Paper Girls is super dope. So definitely give that a shot when you get a chance. It's um, I think it's pretty special. Paper Girls also has, I believe, a live action adaptation. I haven't visited, I have not read it at all yet, so I cannot vouch for its um, its quality. But I will get around, I will get around to it, uh, around to it someday, and let you know. So let's go to the realm. The realm is interesting because the realm is one of those um that I haven't uh, I ha I'm not caught up. <laughs> like I don't know where they are right now, but the issues that I read really moved me, and it became one of my favorites. I think it's right. It's pretty cool. I just wish Fables had stayed more grounded and focused on Rimmer. She's a real problem with what happened with Fable Town. I hated the relationship between Bigsby and Snow White and her flip flopping. I I get you. Fables went went on way longer than it needed to be and got overly convoluted and whatever. I understand. Again, I'm not a Fables defender. I like it, but I get you. I'm not I'm not I'm not mad at your take. I thought initially you only read a single issue. And I'm like, well, you can't say you hated it with only one issue. So yeah, you're still waiting for the secret the sequel, Plastic Girls. Shut your ass up, man. Oh, I have to. Why do I have this open? Over here, listening to politics. Okay, so by the creative team of Seth M. Peck, <clears throat> Jeremy Haun H A U N, and Nick Filardi, the realm is um the realm is for last time I checked is not too far to its narrative, but it has one of the most interesting starts in recent comics that I've ever read. So the world has been thrown into complete disarray by mythical creatures. I'm talking dragons, elves orcs high fantasy shit you know what i'm talking about goblins whatever the case you be and it follows the story of a group of humans that are basically trying to survive in this overgrowing despair filled kind of like dystopian world so like it's it's wait where am i ranking invincible you might you'll, you'll find out you'll see it wait and see my friend yeah you'll see you'll see Got to go in order. Got to go in order. But yeah, the realm is super cool. I, I, I love the artwork. I love the artwork. I think it's beautifully drawn. I, look at look at her. That's a bad bitch. We black. <laughs> we out here. It's clean. Um, yeah, it's cool. I like it. I have to catch up though. I, I feel like if I caught up, I'd I'd, be, I'd have a better. I'd, I'd have more to say. But anyways, blankets. Now you'll be interesting to know this. Have you guys like? Have you at all like tangentially followed any of the book banning and this and that and the third that people were complaining about? So Blankets by Craig Thompson was one of those books that got banned in like, I don't remember if it was Florida or wherever it was. I have it right here. Blankets by Craig Thompson. I think this is an absolutely fantastic graphic novel, but I don't think it's for children. This is a bit of a... um. What does it say in the back here? In this telling, which includes beautifully rendered memories of all the small brutalities parents inflict upon their children's siblings, Thompson describes the ecstasy and ache of obsession with a lover with God and is unafraid to suggest ways that obsession can consume and itself and evaporate. I've always thought it's like a bit of a coming coming of age story for the main character and him learning to deal with his faith in a religion, his relationship and infatuation with a woman, and then the house situation that he's in and dealing with it's um actually a black and white one i don't know if that's a turnoff for people it is black and white but i think that um the illustrations and the way that the artistry comes across to display and show emotions is well done so i don't have a problem with it if invincible is not at least the top 10 of throwing hands <laughs> 
It might be up there. It might not be. Maybe it's not on the list. Who knows? Who knows? I'm a crazy, wacky man. Who who said that to me? Who said that to me? Like you're a crazy, wacky man. I never know what to expect. I never know what to expect from you. And I was like, uh, okay. I can I, I tried to do it in the um time of the creative force. Okay. Death Vigil. Now I could never pronounce the artist's name. He 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 draws for a lot of series that I like. I just call him Sajik, but um, are you special? If so, go ahead and become a death knight by joining a by joining the death vigil, a team tasked with fighting evil and the primordial enemy of Earth. Oh, did I mention this? You have to die to join. You got to be dead, though. You got to be dead. All covers, all covers and arts and writing are done by Stefan Sajic. I, I can't pronounce that guy's name, but um, Death Vigil is pretty cool. So they fight these like primordial beings that like are like the antithesis to Earth or whatever. Bernie is like the character that kind of draws them in, and when you die, she basically gives you and grants you an ability. Your hair turns white, and then you become like a death crime fighting <laughs> being. <laughs> what's the right terminology for this it's super unfortunate thank you for the follow super unfortunate because as far as i remember they never followed it up follow up the first the first um volume because sometimes a lot of these um comic book content creators have their cookies in many jars like i don't think morning glories has gotten an issue since 20 fucking 15 like what the hell, dude? I remember one time Rick Remender and I wanted him to keep I wanted to focus I wanted him to focus on low. He was writing something for Marvel. He was doing low. He was doing Deadly Class. He was doing this. Seven to Eternity. And I'm like, bro, I'm getting two issues a year. This shit is killing me, dog. Like, I need more. So yeah, it's kind of one. It's kind of one. But yeah. They fucking? They better be fucking. <laughs> Lost his heart. He's out. <laughs> Hello, what's up, ABX? How you doing? If death looks good, I'm down. It's the girl you see on screen. That's like the girl on the left with the little thing on her with the white hair. That's that's Bernie. Um, I always tell myself if I'm letting my kid read whatever they want, my only responsibility is that they know this is fantasy. I was reading porn about back in middle school and my parents never knew. I was also reading like I guess Ranma one half of certain things with nudity in it. But I but I was a smart kid that you know didn't get like corrupted by that. A lot of kids are, don't have that level of maturity because I remember kids in my class if they saw like a, a booby in like an anatomy book, they'd be like, <laughs> yeah, 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 look at the best, yeah, and like like freak out and like you know what I'm saying. But um, I think as for your, I think it's for the parents to decide. At the end of the day, my problem is schools, the school boards, teachers, governors, and politicians do not get to decide what it is that you get to do with your children, how you want to educate them. That's for you, the parent, to decide. So. I told I'm pretty locked up with you. I miss Ultra Mega. I haven't I have not experienced that. This one's pretty interesting because it's an it's a it's it's an anthology. It's Sun Bakery. Now, Sun Bakery is just a well, if you don't know what an anthology is, because it's a it's a collection of short of short stories compiled into like one book. I know I've I know I have a um a small thing about it written here. I'm gonna read what I wrote, but just give me one moment. But yeah, my favorite one is the one that you see on screen here about this girl. This girl, it's like a, it's honestly like an American battle shown in like that part. Part there's one that takes heavy and deep, deep inspiration from the Metroid series, where like it's pretty much Samus Aran kind of going around. But okay, so comic anthology full of short stories written and drawn by Corey Lewis. This graphic novel has a video game parody series that are shown in Jump inspired and many more that continue throughout the issues. I think it's a good reason to must buy. So you might read like one issue, skip something else, whatever, whatever, and then circle back to something else that was like from the first like section of the, um, the volume. And I'm a just like, Hopefully the camera can kind of catch this, but like there's like this other picture. You can see her like kind of powering up Super Saiyan like and Super Saiyan esque. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was super good and the in the and the combat was moving me well enough for me to to place it up here. Do you read Mark Miller books? Do you recommend him? Um Mark Miller. Why does that sound familiar? Give me a second. Mark Miller. Sometimes I'm really bad with names. That's my problem. I couldn't remember Garth Ennis the other day. And I and I always cook him. Mark, they gave me the fucking Mark Miller. 
I don't think I recognize who this is. So I can't recommend anything in any direction. I don't think I know what that is. Books in order? What has he written? I don't even know if I'm looking at the right guy. I don't know. Um remind me remind me later. Let me let me stay on track here. Remind me later though. I don't I don't I don't recall. Um yes, yeah, a comic book yeah, comic book um this graphic novel is a video game parody. Yeah, it's just a comic book anthology, so we'll just keep pushing with that. It's pretty simple, but it's it's, it's cool. I like the artwork too. And that's a bad bitch. Look at her. She's cute. I like I like I like pink haired thoughts though. Nyak, nyak, nyak. He made kick ass. Oh wow, I'm a fraud. I like kick ass. Oh, but kick ass would be the only thing I probably know from him, and I didn't even get that far in that. But I'm a I'm a I'm a. Give me a second. I'll I'll look I'll look I'll look it up for you. Morning glories. Oh man, this one hurts. This one's a little bit hard to speak about because again, this is the one I I brought up earlier that has not had a volume. Holy crap! When's the last? I really think it's like 2015. And you know what's crazy? Here's the crazy part. Oh my god! This, this this is what this is what pissed me off about it so much. So the one of the one of the one of the um one of the artists in it. Let me get the artist's name. I have I have like I have like all of my articles open. I just and I should I probably should have organized this better in order. Just give me a moment, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the unprofessionalism. That's monstrous. That's deadly class. That's rat queens. I ain't looking for none of that. I'm looking for that. Um. Morning glories. Looking for morning glories. What the fucking name of the um the creative team? Uh, what the? What the fuck is this? Oh. Trying to pull the book out. <laughs> Joe I is it Joe? I think it's Joe Joe Eisma. Yes. Joe Eisma is who I'm thinking of. Nick Spencer, who's the writer. Joe Eisma, then all these other people are probably letterers and colorers and things of that nature. Oh sorry. I I was trying I could not find it, but yeah, this is this is the one of the big chunky wongy chunky boys. For morning glory, so you know I really, 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 really mess with it, and now my bookshelf's a mess. Uh, that's why I didn't want to throw on my bookshelf. But anyways, anywho, my bad, y'all. But yeah, um, Joe Isma did this thing where basically he could be like, "Hey, would you like to be a background character in Morning Glories?" So we had references to draw people. You could email him your name or whatever, and a picture of yourself from, like, from, like, different angles, and I, I was supposed to be in one of the later issues, and it's never been, it hasn't been an issue since, bro, I was about to be in that bitch, I'm, I'm like, yo, it's okay if Irina kills me, the go, the best character, but no, I never got it, I never got it, I'm so sad, bro, but yeah, so, I, uh, how many of you guys here are familiar with the story of Danganronpa? I think Dongan Rampa and Morning Glories have some 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 commonality and overlap. They're not the same story at all, I would say, but there's commonality and overlap here. Are you guys familiar with Dongan Rampa? Or do I have to explain that? Just let me know. Um now you have a top thirty DC Marvel comic storyline is for yet, or is that still being cooked up? Was I cook was I supposed to be doing that? If that if I was supposed to be doing that, no, I haven't done any of that. But I can do that. But can I do that next next year? <laughs> I'm tired of making lists. I'm tired. I like a list. Junko and Oshima. Oh, I guess you know. Okay, so basically, Morning Glories Academy is simple is similar to Hope's Peak Academy. That is like the most prestigious school, <clears throat> like in the world. Like if you go to this school and you graduate, you will become somebody important. Like you'll be some someone great. But everything is not as it seems. Just like Hope's Peak Hope's Peak Academy, this school is kind of messed up, man. It's, I say kind of, it's very messed up. There's all types of torture and, and, and just unhinged stuff happening here. Like, it's kind of crazy. Please, please tell me. Yeah, there we go. So 
Anyway, so created by Nick Spencer and Joe Isma, Morning Lords Academy is the world's most prestigious school, but it's truly a place where the students are physically and psychologically tortured. The series deals with uncovering the occult, the supernatural, told from various perspectives of the main cast as they try not to die. It should be praised for its characters. I think its pacing is extremely good. And I think it has a very compelling mystery. But it's one of those things where I think the mystery has gotten so complex. If... They can't tie it together seamlessly, throw the whole thing out. I wouldn't recommend it. But as far as like Irina is one of my favorite characters that comes from the series. She's super dope. She's a yo, she's a hitter, bro. She's she got the machine. She be going dumb. That's my bitch. That's my girl. She's nice with it. When you say comics, are you talking about are you taking into account DC and Marvel or anything in the comics? Oh, I you weren't here at the beginning. Um so basically I said at the beginning was it's graphic novels, comics, American, European. Basically, I'm just not doing like Eastern stuff. At the very, at the very beginning, what I was saying was that um, when I really, really broke it down to brass to brass task, most Marvel and DC comics and story runs, even the ones that I love, Blackest Day, Darkest Night, Jonathan Hickman, um, Fantastic Four, and etc., those are not my 30 favorite comic books anymore. They're just not up there anymore. The first thing that I started with, though, was actually Gail Simone's New 52 Batgirl run. There's another thing you'll see. Uh, there's some things here you'll see, though. It's DC. It's DC, but it's DC Vertigo. It's not necessarily like, you know what I'm saying? Like the DC imprints. But um, big two comics are not amongst my favorite anymore at this point in my life. As, especially the, the shit that comes out now. I just thought this doesn't move me anymore. Is Morning Glory still ongoing? It's complete. Morning Glories has not come out in like last time I checked. Again, I think like 2015, 2016. Unfortunately, I'm not recommending this one. This one, this one is one of my favorites. I think it's really good, but it has to come out in a long time. I think, I think we start on issue 52. So like, so Frostbite is um DC Vertigo. This is a DC comic. It's Vertigo though. It's not like a big two superhero Superman, whatever, whatever, whatever. So yeah. It's, yeah, it's on hiatus still, yeah. So I don't know if Nick Spencer and Joe Ice are ever gonna are ever gonna get back to it, unfortunately. Now Frostbite is yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if it's really been that long. I I because my you know my perception of time is messed up. I'm an old man. I don't I don't know anything, but I think it was about that time. I'd say the latest is twenty seventeen, but twenty sixteen ish sounds about right. Frostbite is a comic book that I find fascinating. Because it has parallels, overlap, and commonality with a story that I wrote, or in well, in a story that I'm in the midst of writing called Snow Globe. I ain't gonna talk about it, but in this world, heat is power. There was an, there was an experiment that messed up the world, and basically, it's perpetually winter everywhere. So people kill and fight, and you know, wage war or whatever and you know have beef over heat so if i'm in the if i'm in the wilds and i'm like oh you got a thermo jacket oh shoot you got the long johns yo i'm running up on you and i'm taking that oh you have a a lantern that ir irradiates heat yo my boy let me get that yo run that this girl is basically trying to find the scientist that caused this issue and is trying to get them to reverse it so the world could go back to us uh, to normal, because there are people who are born into this world that's only known this endless winter, and people who are from, from that are before it. So it's a story of her trying to essentially save the world. Give us the rundown. We can be your real your real time test control, control group. Yeah, we can do that, but in a more closed environment. You gotta pay for that one. Sorry, sir. I can't expose. Can't do it. Can't do that. Empowered. Empowered. I like Empowered. Empowered is by Adam Warren. Naya likes his post-apocalyptic worlds. Do I? <laughs> yeah, Empowered is interesting. Um, The main character has a suit that makes her very, very strong, but the less that's on her, the weaker that she gets. And she's kind of known as the, the hero who gets captured the most, which is constantly like in bondage, getting wrapped up, getting tied up getting gagged and whatnot. It's pretty it's pretty like erotic how they do it. But obviously things progress as things go on. And 
she gets better and better at what she does. However, what I find, I like Adam Warren's art style because it's like, it's kind of manga-esque the way that he draws. He it's, This is another one that's in black and white. It's very manga-esque, so I really like that too. I like the way that the characters progress and move throughout the stories. I think it's very... It's very believable, I guess is the way that I, is the way that I want to say want to say. It. But I could, but I think my my understanding is they took they took some inspiration from the Wonder Woman, <laughs> the old school like Golden Age Wonder Woman, where she should get tied up and 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 whatever all the time. When it was seen that like relinquishing power was supposed to be somewhat a strong or good thing for women. I, I I'm I'm probably butchering this because I have not seen that documentary since like 2013. Cause I'm just trying to go. I'm trying to go based off pure vibes and memories. But empowered is super dope, though. The best po post. Po oh, Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer is pretty cool. But yeah, empowered. Shout out to shout out to empowered. Adam Warren has also done um like graphic novel drawings and depictions of like Dirty Pair and stuff. You guys know like Dirty Pair. Was it Dirty Pair? I think yeah, Dirty Pair. Yeah, yeah. Deadly Class is decently well known. Um, I'll still explain it, but most people were like, it's like assassination classroom, but like, no, but yes, in a sense where hopes, um, King's dominion school is a school where assassins are being trained. So it does have that, um, that connection that overlaps with both. But other than that, I'd say they're pretty different. So Marcus Lopez, they really, they really assassins though. Yeah. Yeah. Marcus Lopez comes to this school he's like broke down on his luck depressed all kinds of stuff he's stink homeless whatever all of that and essentially he gets inducted to this school where now he has home and a shelter and everything but the school is not all it's meant out to be and he just this story has love triangles betrayal death upon death the headmaster is a maniac the classes are crazy people are in this unhinged but let me um I think I have it here. Yeah, watch this. I got this for you guys. All right, watch this. All right, so. So Deadly Class is a comic book series published by Image Comics, written, written by Rick Remender. It's, joined, it's drawn by Wes Craig and Lee Lowridge. It's an ongoing series. Oh, no, she's, actually, it's, it's not ongoing. It's completed now. I'm sorry. It's completed. Deadly Class is about Marcus Lopez, an unfortunate youth living on the streets who gets involved, gets invited to King's Dominion School of the Deadly Arts, a school that trains future assassins. Marcus must deal with the burden of his past, his trials and tribulations of high school, and surviving dangerous missions. Deadly Class has great drama, unique artwork, character diversity, and compelling actions, and these are some of the reasons why you should be reading it. Um, I think the artwork's pretty distinct, um, but I think it works well for the tone of the comic. Uh, I think the pages are well detailed. It's a fantastic job with the various cover pages. I think it's I think it's good looking. Um, and if you care about representation, you'll see a lot of white, white, black, Hispanic, and Asian representation. All of those things, and you know, all, all of that stuff too. So representation is important to you as well. You'll get that. You'll get that in this. Um, some of these char some of these characters come from prestigious families that have like multiple generations of people coming to King's Dominion, and some people are like not that and you'll see there's pros and cons to each and i'll leave it at that but i will admit that deadly class lost my interest for about 13 issues which ran for about uh, somewhere for like maybe two to three years but i think it bounced back strong at the at the end which is why ultimately i think it's a good series for mostly from top to bottom but there is a lull for me in it personally it's crazy. I watched North Preacher, but man, do I hate the Parasite movie. <laughs> like Parasite, like the like the anime adaptation, like with the guy with the hand. You're talking about that? Or, or something else. Or that was that the Korean movie that went crazy and won a bunch of shit. I want to get like so deep with Sunstone, but like I feel like I should just keep it simple. Let let, let lesbian BDSM. It's raw. <laughs> it's raw. It's raw, bro. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Lesbian BDSM. That's really what it is. Like, I really could like, ooh, they explore the characters and do this and do that. But, and that's it's it's not untrue, but it's lesbian BDSM. That's what it is. <laughs> I like it. I think it's well drawn. Um. I'll be horny. So. I wonder what I wrote here. 
A lesbian BDSM, a case more than just that, a smart narrative that's two women explore themselves through bondage, great themes and artwork. Yeah, like no, like kind of like Nanata Kawaru with the breathers and, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know what you're here for. <laughs> you know what you're here for. I'm not, I'm not going to overcomplicate it. Wait, is the Umbrella Academy comic book on here? Because that shit is batshit and chain unhinged. I felt, I felt like I and the writer was on something while reading it. No, I like the Umbrella, Umbrella Academy, what I've read. I don't think I've gotten far enough to have a concrete opinion on it. I did see the first two seasons of the show as well, but no, it's not on here. It's not on here. Sounds like one of those cheap sex games you play on shady websites. Um, don't worry, man. It's 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 it's, it's good stuff. Hold on, look at that. Look how look how she tied up, man. It's clean. I'm not going. I'm not going to overcomplicate this. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna just keep it pushing. But yeah, I like. I like it though. I actually genuinely like it, but. Um, remember when I brought up, remember when I brought up, um, Rat Queens and Death Vigil? Same artist. This is one of my favorite comic book artists. Like, that dude can draw his absolute ass off. And his, his characters are very vibrant and expressive. This is one of the hardest things to explain without being able to go into vivid detail about it. But this is called Pretty Deadly. And this is the daughter of death. Death Face Guinea. And she's one of my all-time favorite characters in comic book history. She is fucking raw, absolutely raw. Yes, Ger the Gerard way isn't isn't the writer isn't the writer a member of My Chemical Romance? The the writer of what? Sunstone. I, what the, My Chemical Romance is a band, right? <laughs> I'm so, I'm so I, when it comes to movies and, and music, I am uncultured. I I know where my weaknesses lie. I know where my strengths lie. I'm not a um. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me find what I'm looking for here. By the way, anything that I'm reading that you see me off your reading, I've written all of it. None of this. All of this is all of this is my own writing for articles and recommendation pieces that I was doing when I was building up my portfolio. When I was fresh out of college, trying to like get people to um to read my work, just so you know, just so you know, I know I have one for Pretty Deadly. Where the hell is it? Is it four? Is it this one? Sun Bakery, Invincible, Mecca that you. Oh, there was Mecca that you on. Whatever, dog. So in this narr this narrative is about Death's daughter, a dark horror Western fantasy, Death Maget Guinea. Now I think this is one of those stories where the artistry does a lot of storytelling. It's very, as Simi would call it, artsy fartsy. I would say it's a little bit artistically. I don't say over po poetic, but poetic. But I don't think I have a poet's heart, so it's hard for me to pick up on all a lot of the things that are happening. It's through multiple rereads that I was able to like truly understand it. But this is one of the comic books where I think the action, like the actual fighting and combat is extremely well. Because one thing that I actually do believe from top to bottom on average more times than not, manga fights are more gas than comic book fights. I do believe that. But there are certain comic books that I think are the exception to the rule. This is one of them. The fighting in this shit is absolutely bananas. It's crazy. Luther Strode is a completely like three volume meathead series. And that's another one that I'd argue has absolutely top tier, god tier fights. Um, Gerard Away, Umbrella Academy writer. Oh, you went Umbrella Academy. Okay, thank you. There we go. Agreed. Manga fights look better. They flow better. I think it's the way that um, comic book fights don't morph the character model of their character enough to 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 show motion the way that eastern storytellers tend to do that so yeah that's fair luther strode is another exception i agree i love i love yeah yeah see you get it you get it you get it but um i would i would throw uh pretty deadly in that category of um of graphic novels comic books american ones if you will that absolutely do it well, so the artwork is by Emma Emma Rios, and the story is by Kelly Sue DeConnick. And again, like I said earlier, it's a bloody Western horror tale with some mythology mixed in, and it's a story about the journey of the daughter of death, Death Face Guinea. I can't say anything more because I'll be spoiling. I just can't. I can't. I can't say any more blood. Why the Last Man is um pretty self-explanatory. 
it's, it's, it's what you think. Essentially, with the exception of the main character, and I think, I think if I remember correctly, his monkey is male. You know, every man in the world just drops dead. Gone. One guy on a planet full of nothing but women. And it's a story of him navigating that. And them trying to find a way to repopulate Earth. Because obviously without semen, without sperm, without things like that, the human population will simply die out. And it's not like the world was prepared for this ordeal to happen. Like they had some stash sperm or something like that. Like it happened out of nowhere. And yeah. Why the last one I believe did get a TV adaptation relatively recently as well i have not watched it so i cannot judge as how good it is as an adaptation but it's out there if you want to maybe dip your toe in the show first if that's easier for you than just picking up a comic book haphazardly people say i'm pretentious when it comes to movies comics and manga but i don't care artists are and most normies don't know what good art is oh i don't I, me and you are me and you are aligned on that i get called a gatekeeper and elitist and i'm like why would i choose to be not elite yeah, I'm an elitist. I don't care. I'm okay. I'm. I'm. It, it's not. It's not an offensive term to call me pretentious. I'm the exact same. Way. I don't care. That's not. That's not. That's not offensive to me. I actually take it as a compliment. I'm totally with you on that. <laughs> I just like the point they. I just. I just like the point they show action in Western comics instead of the lead up and impact. Western ones show basically the follow through. Okay, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, but I've always thought manga. One thing they do better than comic books in general is action. I think comic books have a better I think comic books are better written personally you don't have to agree with that I could I could find so many examples of extremely well, well um I almost said well written great writers in Japan and eastern storytelling but I think what I like about comic books is that, um they don't seem co as copy and pasted to me as anime and manga does where that industry to me comes across to me as a lot more self incestuous where they constantly eating each other it's new slice of life. I'm the over excited, hyperactive knucklehead. I'm the calm, cool, collected genius. Like, like so much copy and paste. Like, like to me with this, I like it because I'm like, I never know what I'm gonna get. It's gonna be a story about free will, maybe destiny, maybe hoping this. Like, I don't know. I just think it's more, there's more diversity here. This one's well known. People know about Saga. People know about Saga. Shout out to Saga, man. What did thing? What did thing? What did thing? Describe it as? Um, was it? What did, he, did he say? It was Star Trek meets the Runaways, something like that. Is that how? We, is that how they described it? When I first was trying to get into it, and I was like, first of all, I don't like when you use other placeholder um series to explain the series. That's just me though. It's a personal thing. You don't got to agree with that. But um, Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. Two people from a, from an opposing sides of a galactic war fall in love, have a child that's I guess seem as kind of like not okay and blasphemous. Um, now must run from both sides of the conflicts because of, because of what because of the unit the union that they had. It's a great it's a great space epic. It has some obvious Star Wars influence, in my opinion, but it contains extremely solid storytelling and art and good artwork. And you guys don't have to deal with one of the most painful cliffhangers of all time i think on issue 50 before they went on like a two to three year hiatus something completely devastating happened and i had to sit with that for years my boy years and you guys don't have to deal with that so this is one of the best times to get into saga i absolutely recommend it the artwork is amazing the writings are good the writings are good the writing is good the characters are good the character relationships how they talk to one another how they grow are the ones who don't grow stay static they stay static for a reason all of it's fantastic and getting to see their child grow up through the years and it being told through her perspective is an absolute treat and an absolute blast i have i have wait i i, I disagree i've yet to see a better comment than berserk i'm not saying it doesn't exist i get to see it oh well, I don't hold Berserk in I don't hold Berserk in such high um regard though, so we just don't see eye to eye there. That's fine. I have, Berserk to me is not objectively like the greatest like manga or anything of the sort. Especially now that Maria's not around. I've heard it, it's been really bad. But again, I'm a I'm a person who thinks the golden age is the best part of Berserk. But that's fine. That's fine. Everyone's different. I need to read more recent issues. Probably we'll just probably just wait till book four comes out. That's fair. I usually kind of go by the volume unless like the the thing that I'm lucky about with comic books, unlike with like certain series and manga, like like the indie games that I play and the stuff that I read, no one cares about. No one talks about it. 
I'd have to go out my way to see a spoiler, if you get what I'm saying. So I'm good. No one's going to spoil me on 7 to Eternity. I'm the only nigga reading it, <laughs> right? If it's like One Piece, if it's out, I, I know I have to get off the internet because people will, um, whatever. So I don't know what the conviction arc is, but I, I'm not saying they're bad. I think the Golden Age, I, I, just, I just don't think it gets any better than the Golden Age. What's the conviction arc? I don't, I don't know the arcs by name. You'd have to tell me what that is. Also, remember that I'm a character, I'm a person who cares about characters more than anything. My favorite character was retarded for like 10 years. Casca. <laughs> she got dicked down by Griffith and was brain dead for years. If you don't, if I do not have a character to attach myself to, there's, no matter how good your series is, and I can admit that if I'm being impartial, unbiased, and as objective as I can be, it won't move me on a personal level. I need characters that I like. So much copying in the anime industry, and yet I never see someone move me in a way sooner Yoshi Sawada did. Facts. Religious cult bird priest arc. I don't remember that. Actually, the Golden Eight arc is overrated. That's fine. I'm not a, like I'm not a berserk guy. Whatever you say about berserk, good, bad, or middling is not nothing to do with me. I don't. I do not stand berserk. So you know, that's fine. You don't gotta. You don't gotta like it. I need I, I want I need some help from myself for this from this one because this is a hard this is a bit of a hard series to explain again without spoiling anything. So I'm trying to see what I wrote on my um on my thing here, but did I not have it? Did I not okay? Wow. Okay. So disgra the disgraced fam Rick Remender again, by the way. Disgraced family member Adam O That's what I right? Ozi Osidis? He joins a desperate group of magical beings to take down an omniscient king tormenting the world. Now, that guy, that's the main character in the middle. And the guy behind him is that king who can like see into your mind and basically be like, I will give you, what do you want? I want 80 bitches. I'll give you 80 bitches. But with that, now I control you and I can see through your eyes. And this is part of the reason why he's so omniscient and powerful. There's, this is one of those stories that has like a Subasa Reservoir Chronicles level of a like stab in the back. We were like, wow, this story was not going in any in the direction that I actually thought it was going in. So I don't want to say too much. But one thing I'm going to praise for sure the artwork is absolutely god tier. I think the fights and action sequences are good, but I'd say it's carried more so by projectile fight scenes and the particle effects from the different magic and different magic infused items and things of that nature. You'll see so many cool looking creatures and characters. It's super fucking dope, man. Like it's This is another one of those comic books that like I hadn't read too much of it, but it had stole my heart pretty quickly. And you guys know me. I'm a stubborn bastard. I'm not moved that quickly. I'm 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 the opposite of recency bias. I got, I don't know, nostalgia bias, if you will. So definitely give this a shot, man. It's super, it's 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 really cool. How did I how did I lose this one? I don't think I have anything else written here. I do not. So we can move on. Sorry, Chad. What y'all saying? Um, my favorite arcs were the Conviction and Black Swordsman arc. Okay. The Conviction is when the God Hands come back to the world. I'll never forget the pulling up the Guts Karma's and telling Guts he feels nothing for causing their deaths. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. I, again, I respect Miria. Rest in power to him. I don't think Berserk's a bad series. It's not my cup of tea, though. So I don't much care for it. Woohoo! queens. Pri oh, primacy. You, you actually told me what it's called. Primacy bias. Primacy bias. Primacy bias. I, I have to remember that. Primacy bias. Rat queens. Oh, rat queens. Rat queens is a good time. Rat queens is a little hard to recommend because if you guys don't know the initial artist who draw who drew the art you see here, his name was Rock Upchurch, and he was essentially kicked off of um rat queens because of the domestic abuse situation he he hit his um he hit his wife and stuff like that so unfortunately he got taken off of it and i actually think while they've got like as a test fowler and sajic the guy that wrote that did death vigil and the other ones that i was talking about sunstone absolutely fantastic artists i really think rock up church's art is perfect for this story but anyways 
Rat Queens is a comic book series published by Image Comics, written by Curtis J. I think I think it's Weeby. Weeby is W I E B E. I don't know. And drawn by Rock Rock Upchurch, Stefan Sajak, Tess Fowler, and now Gowen uh, Owen Gwenny. And I think someone else is probably drawing it now. Um, so it takes place in a medieval fantasy setting following a, a group of four unruly, hard-drinking, drug-infused, vulgar female mercenaries and their crazy adventure. Hannah, an elven mage, that's my bitch, D, the human cleric, Violet, a, dwar a dwarven warrior, and Betty, who's a smidgen. The series is chock full of... um. Potent well, I say potential. This is, this is, I wrote this lost so long ago. I think it should be praised for its artwork, its fun cast, the characters, its action, humorous dialogue, interpersonal relationship. It's a very, it's a very straightforward series. It doesn't try to be anything more than it is. It's a series that thrives off of its aesthetics, action, its characters, and its and its um its humor. Because like, you'll be like, all right, I'm ready to fight. Let's go. She's like hung over. She's like Jesus fucking Christ. What did I drink last night? Like it's, I love it. They be fucking. They be yiddies. If you if you are moved by the yiddies and the lead thoughts, give it a shot, man. Give it a shot. Rat Queens used to be one of my all time favorites. It has fallen down the wayside as the years go on, but I I'll, it'll always have a soft spot for me because I love I love seeing unruly mercenaries in medieval settings just be unhinged. No, I don't like Vinland Saga, but I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's a bad series. Some people, when it comes to certain things, like I would say in, in, in typically folklore mythology, so I'll say like vampires, werewolves, and things of that nature, they're traditionalist and they don't budge. I have friends who won't give certain stories with like vampires in it, like Twilight, even the light of day, because like if a vampire goes in the sun, they fucking get incinerated. I will take nothing else but incineration from the sun. I am like that with vikings if my vikings are not pillaging destroying fighting throwing their axe if they're not literally thor finn when he was unhinged thor kel or thor's before he was like i don't want to fight i'm not trying to see that this i have no enemy shit does not move me in any capacity i am not interested in it again I think it's completely well drawn. I think it's well written. I think it's well paced. I don't even think that farmer arc is as bad as people make it out the seam. But does that interest me as a lover of Vikings? It does not. My Vikings need to be flinging their axes. And they're not doing that. In the name of Valhalla or whatever. So I'm not interested. That's all I can say. It personally doesn't jive with me. But I have no smoke. No beef with this series. Zero. None. That reminds me of Justin Roiland. They replaced him as Morty and Lemongrass from Wretched Time, even after it was proven he was innocent, which was stupid. And I'm like, having, this, having to hear Lemongrass and Fiona and Cake without it being Justin Roiland is not the same thing. And I'm like, part of the reason that I watched Rick and Morty, even though I don't watch it anymore, was for Justin Roiland's voice acting. You remove that, and there goes 60% of my reason for watching this. This castle is in... You, look. No one, that's, un, you can't replicate that. Only that nigga could sound like that. L listen, listen to me, M Morty, like, yeah, it's not moving me. I can't do it, blood. I can't do it, blood. I will forever meme it up because my homie loves Vinland Saga and I always love be merching it like I have no enemies. Yeah, yeah, that should be funny. That line doesn't move me though, but I saw some meme videos about it. But yeah, it's a cool series. It's a cool, it's a good series. I just, it's not for me though. I get. I want to give a shout out to to Sex Criminals, because Sex Criminals has like one of the most like one of the funniest synopsises that I ever read for it. And I I don't I I, I didn't get as far as I should have. I don't even know how far it's gotten if it's completed or not. <laughs> but Sex Criminals, <laughs> bro. Long story short. Okay. All right. So okay. So meet John, the actor, and Susie, the librarian. Both share a um, pretty uh, unique special ability. <laughs> when they come, they cast Zawardo. Okay? When they orgasm, time stops. So after sleeping together and realizing they have the same power, I uh, decided to rob a bank. So it's a hilarious... 
story full of sex and crime is written by Matt Fraction and the artwork is done by Chip Z- Zadarsky or however you pronounce his name. But but yeah, <laughs> it's it made me laugh, bro. Like my guy, if I remember correctly, did he beat one out and then took a dump in the guy's like plant? Like it's crazy. It's crazy. It's 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 kind of an unhinged synopsis, but I want to give it a shout out. <laughs> What's this? A series we all should recognize by the artistry? My gatekeeper to number 10, Invincible. The greatest comic book, superhero comic book story ever told. Yeah, I said it. Especially if it's self-contained. I think it's better than Empowered. Is it Queen's Gambit? What's the other? Bomb Queen? What other ones called? Any other ones that I've read? I think this is the best one. Better than The Boys. Better than all that stuff. All that stuff. So, yeah. See, that sounds similar to a comic I am writing. That's interesting. Sex is Aguardo. Exactly. It's so, it's, it's so effing hilarious. It's a good one. Yes. Y'all know Invincible. Um, Yeah. It's superheroes. It goes dumb. They'd be fighting. They'd be throwing ungodly hands. I want to, I want to, I want to pull up that picture. There it is. Actually, this this might be a spoiler, but if you only watched it, but like, yeah, there you go. They'd be swapping hands. It's like ultra uber bloody violent. But anyways, the cell, if you guys like um, Walking Dead, it's the same writer like Walking Dead. So it's just it's a self-proclaimed the greatest superhero book in the universe. But I don't think it's a stretch at all. Robert Kirkman wrote this. Um it was drawn by Corey Walker, and then I think later on, or maybe they go back and forth between Ryan Otley. But yeah, they created a, com- a superhero comic book, in my opinion, unlike no other. It's an ultra-violent comic that follows the half-human, half villain you might make, uh, Mark Grayson. And as his powers start to manifest, taking up the superhero name Invincible, he attempts to balance being a superhero with school, family, love, and world-threatening events. The Season 2 is coming out. The, the cartoon is out. It's well, it's pretty well known by this point, so I don't feel any need to have to explain it more. But it's super dope, and Alan the alien is my favorite character, followed by Ad- Adam Eve, Atom Eve. Those are my two favorite characters. The one thing I hate in Invincible is the time. Ooh, yeah, I feel it. I feel it. Habibi, another Craig Thompson book. Habibi is kind of a heartbreaking story. So if you're like. You know, if you're not good at dealing with that, I wouldn't recommend it. But Habibi, I don't have the cultural knowledge because I'm not from that culture to really speak on some of the the specific things. And I, I guess like um, Islam, I believe, if I'm if I'm correct. Um, but if there's two runaway Islamic slaves. They grow up in isolation for years. Un, then uncontrollable circumstances separate them and they grow apart but they're constantly yearning to meet each other again and the oh god there's there's just one scene that happens that just sticks in my craw and when i think of like most emotionally impactful scenes that i've ever saw where there's a situation with giving up someone's body and the reaction that a person had which was a perfectly red-blooded male human reaction, but the disgust that he felt. And I'm like, bro, I highly, I have to pull it up. I have to pull it up. I have to pull it up. This is, this is not a book. This is an experience, bro. I think this is Craig Thompson's best work. It's another black and white series. So it's, kind of manga-esque in that well not that manga esque where it's drawn but it's kind of like black and white like a manga hopefully it's not a deal breaker for some people but if if there's one thing if there's one thing in this top 10 that, that you that you're not already aware of that i highly recommend it would be habibi habibi is one of those things that kind of changed kind of changed my life a little bit so yeah I have multiple problems with Invincible, but it's still goaded. Yeah, Invincible's not perfect. Like, I actually think Mark Grayson is kind of a herb. He's kind of a burger. I like him. He's a good character, but he's kind of a burger. I don't I don't like root for him. I think KG said this. Like, I'd be liking when Cecile be barring his ass up. So, yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I love Habibi, man. It's super good, super good, super good. I guess I should pull this up, too. American Vampire. This is this is a sto- this is one of those stories I can't get my my purest vampire friends to read, but huh? bring out this, bring out the chunky boy, the br- the bricks. I got them motherfucking bricks, nigga. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, you see that boy Skinner? You see my girl Pearl Jones on the bike? This is my that's this is my vampire. Pearl and Kishota Ace Orayahato on the Budeido. Those are my vampires. Um so yeah. Um how 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 does one describe American vampire though? Where do I where do I have this written down? By the way, if you're at all interested in getting the links to any of these articles that I wrote way back when, I'll, I could post them if you want. You don't have to read it, though. I don't really care about this anymore. I don't do this anymore to the degree that I used to. But if you want them, I could post them. Just let me know. Uh, um, two, 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 two. Okay, so it's created. Oh, by the way, this is, this is, this is DC, DC, uh, DC, another DC one, DC Vertigo. Created by Scott Snyder and Raphael. I'm not going to pretend to, I could say his last name. Written by Stephen King um, and Snyder and drawn by... Anyways, yeah. Um, it's a story about vampires. I don't really want to explain it, but I think it's really good. <laughs> like, different vampires have, like... Like, there's one... Some vampires that are, like... They can, they can, like, survive in the daylight. But when it's nighttime and when most vampires come out, they're not as strong. So, like, there's different types, different angles, different, like, things you have to deal with. The fact that, like, if you fall in love with somebody and they don't want to turn, their mortality will run out. And you have to deal with, like, outgrowing people, seeing people you love grow old and die and stuff like that. Like, I don't know how to best, I don't know how best to explain it without literally talking about story beats. But uh, it's one of my all-time favorite comic books. No, I don't think it's, like, Blade. Because Blade... Blade, he's a vampire that kills vampires, right? Isn't he a vampire hunter? I've never actually watched Blade or Red Blade. I don't really know much about it. I've seen Blade like once. So I'm actually not a Blade expert, so you you'd have to tell me. I don't know much about it if I'm being quite honest. Um, okay, this one's interesting. Another DC Vertigo Clean Room. That's my girl Astrid Mueller, man. Clean Room, Clean Room, Clean Room. How does one describe Clean Room? Okay. The fiance of our titular character, our heroine, I'll keep her name a secret for the time being, heals himself after reading a book by the world famous Astrid Mueller, who you see on your screen right there, the baddie on your screen, a self help guru. She now plans to infiltrate this uh, massive worldwide or- organization to get to the truth. And I got to leave it there. I say any more and I feel like it starts giving away things about the story that I think are best experienced in a first initial read by complete surprise because I didn't see it coming at all. But let's just say the world is not particularly normal. There could be some supernatural things that exist in the world. Blade is about a half vampire hunter, hunts vampire. Okay, no, this, uh, Pearl is not like a vampire hunter or anything of the sort. So it's not, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like Blade. And she, I don't think she qualifies as a half vampy, but I should give, I should give Blade a, a real chance. I only seen like the first Blade movie like once. I never watched the other ones, but shout out to Wesley Snipes. He black or whatever. Also, I heard I heard you don't pay his taxes, and anyone who don't pay their taxes get my respect. Tokyo Ghost, I think, is one of Rick Remender's um, best written series. Absolutely phenomenal. Let me find. Excuse me, I forgot about Lazarus. That's crazy. I'm a fraud. I like Lazarus, but Laz- is Lazarus top 30, though? Is it? Maybe not. Where the hell do I... Do I not have a um a thing for Tokyo Ghost? Okay, well, I can, I, I can kind of explain Tokyo Ghost. I, I, I mostly want Tokyo Ghost for the names. There we go. Thank you. Los Angeles, 2089, and humanity is plugged in. This is the digital, 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 digital era, digital world. Like... People are not necessarily addicted to drugs. They're addicted to the digital, the virtual tech. Like this is like TikTok on mega supreme steroids. Everybody's got like streaming, getting beamed to their retina, all that stuff. Technology reigns supreme in this world. 
So our two heroes, Debbie and her teched up crackhead of a boyfriend, Led Dent, are basically sent to the world's last techless society and country on Earth, Tokyo, where they have no intention of returning from. And Debbie uses this opportunity to try and cure lead of his technology addiction, written by Rick, Rick Remender, and it's um, drawn by Sean Murphy and colored by Matt Hollingsworth. This story is fucking special. Action, writing, characters, whatever. The things that Debbie tries to do to get lead to stop being addicted to technology, I think is um really good social commentary that bleeds in today. Today, we're addicted to our phones, video games, TikTok, porn, Instagram, Twitter, Twix, X, whatever the fuck we call Twitter now, all of that stuff. And I find that its social commentary becomes more pal palpable and more um potent and powerful, the more of a technocratic society I'd say we're becoming. So I recommend this highly. This is one of my all-time favorite comic books. It's so good. I think it's Rick Remender's second best written series. So yeah. This Rick guy must really be a great writer. He is. Rick Remender is on here a lot. A lot of these things are written by him. He's not an artist though, but yes, he is. I will say that Teen Titans comics rebirth is pretty good. Rebirth? Did I read Rebirth Teen Titans? I, I did read a, I did I did give Rebirth a fair chance. I don't remember what I read though. <laughs> I don't remember what I read in Rebirth. Um that the gadget point timeline alternate interceptor get time because top five is on the way. Ooh, we'll see. Spectre gadget. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for the top five. It's time for the top five. It's time for the top five. Number five is something that most of y'all should have expected if you actually pay attention to how I speak. Because I've ad nauseum told y'all that Scott Pilgrim is one of my all-time favorite things I ever experienced in the world, in my life. And Scott Pilgrim came to me at a point in my time, where I, in a part of my life, when I needed it. Scott Pilgrim, Brian O'Malley. <clears throat> Some people have played the game. Some people have seen the movie. Listen, Scott Pilgrim... Um, it's a story of basically him trying to date this girl named Ramona Flowers, and he has to fight against her her um seven evil uh, evil exes. Like her, like bro, vegan Todd is one of the greatest things. I uh, this nigga got powers from being a vegan, bro. This shit is not. This shit is too funny. It takes place in Toronto, Canada, so a lot of the the locations and places that I see. And seeing like bus fare back in the day when it was like bus fare was like a hundred and like a hundred, it's crazy, like a dollar twenty five or whatever. Like I have that extra personal connection to it because I'm also I'm Canadian and it takes place there. And there's actually some locations that you see in that that are no longer in like downtown Toronto, which is super crazy. I absolutely adore Scott Pilgrim. I have it. I have every single volume in complete color. I love the movie adaptation. The beat 'em up video game is absolutely fantastic as well. And I cannot wait for the new show coming out. Kim Pine is absolutely one of my favorite all time characters. Shout to Sex Bombs. Scott Pilgrim, baby. We're making a Scott Pilgrim comeback. Shout out to Brian O'Malley, man. He, he, he's him. One day I will read this. Peak, absolutely peak. I know. I love Scott Pilgrim, bro. And the artwork is amazing. And actually, the combat's good. The combat's actually pretty solid, all things considered. But now, it's time to get into um, what I believe is the best comic book by Rick Remender. And that is low. That is low. Low, man. Low is such a fucking trip. You you have your opinion, but you objectively are wrong. Scott Pilgrim is trash. I'm I can't objectively be wrong. I'm right. It's okay. You don't have to like it. Scott Pilgrim is great. Absolutely great. Give it a shot. You'll have an absolute blast from top to bottom. You're gonna laugh. You're gonna cry. You go you go see Vegan Todd in all of his absolute glory. He's him. He's so funny. If you've seen the movie, it's even funnier in the graphic novel. But let's get to Low, which I believe is Rick Remender's absolute best comic book. And Low. I actually know I have it over here. But I think the way that I wrote it here was kind of perfect. Is there anything else on this list that I need to keep this open for? I do. Give me one moment, guys. Sorry. I think I have it on. 
I'm tired of opening all these goddamn articles. <laughs> There's so many articles. I wrote. I forgot how much I used to write, bro. I used to write like crazy. Okay, I know I have it on this one, but I, this one I I know I I I I um wrote them a little bit like. What am I looking at? Looking for? I'm looking for um for low. Okay. So the sun has expanded into a red giant, thus making the surface of the planet Earth inhabitable, and it forced humanity humanity to take refuge underneath the sea in these like underground dome type things. If you have, to, if I have to make an obvious anime comparison, some think somewhat Topa Tengen Gurren Lagann under under like, you know what I'm saying, like underground spaces like that. So they take refuge under the sea. The remaining f- few million, there's only like a million humans left on Earth. Um, survivors live underwater while the Kane family tries to probe habitable planets for humanity to survive on. But something absolutely terrible happens in the face, and now they face true despair. One woman's hope is the only thing left keeping her going when everything seems so hopeless. And let me tell you why I find Low to be one of the coolest comic books I've ever read. Because it is the only story that I've seen explore the theme of hope versus despair in 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 a, in a like unique way. I all things considered, before Dong and Rampa went to complete shit, while while on his face it was a very basic hope versus despair theme, I thought it was well done. Listen, a fadeaway is a basic move, but if you got a clean fadeaway, you got a clean fadeaway. I can't be mad at that. But this is for the first time I've seen it kind of explored through the opposite lens. One of the characters in this series is overly hopeful. Like, she's almost addicted to hope. And it's like the world and every all the events in it is trying to break her and have her descend into despair. Because no matter who she loses, what happens, and how hopeless things, it's like she keeps on trucking to the point people think she's mentally ill. The artwork is amazing. See that girl right there? Della Kane? That's my bitch. She's fucking awesome. She's sick. And just like, bro, get this. Like, listen, I have been, pra- pra- been praising Rick Remender throughout this entire stream so far. I'm telling you, I believe this is his best written work. So it's, I think it's worth a, worth a shot. But again, the hope versus despair theme, I have never seen it in any narrative explored in such a different and unique uh, fashion. I love this story. It's completed, by the way. A top 10 cartoon list. Uh, Since you said 10, I'll do 10. 10 is not a lot. I can do 10. Yes, I can do 10. Um, Just who the hell do you think I am? Is is, is Is this character naive, though? She's intelligent. She's intelligent. I would say she's naive and gullible, but... No, you can make the argument. I think you can make the case either way. But it's not like a, hey, if you come here, if you come here, we have a watermelon that'll give you super strength. Okay, like she's not like stupid. She's actually extremely intelligent because she's a scientist and stuff. But yeah, she she puffing pure hopium. She's on nothing but hopium, bro. Hopium out the wazoo. You guys, you guys, you are gonna see this. Do you know who that is? This is the woman who conquered death. That is Shao Lian. Mao. That's she is. Best, 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 the best. Listen, man. This is one of my favorite comic books ever. It's done now. This is a sci-fi dystopian, um, dystopian America where the Civil War never ended. The four horsemen of the apocalypse return to fulfill a prophecy and. They happen to be after the life of the U.S. president. Watch as the story of important members of each nation unfold and the journey of death, who is looking for someone or something very important to him. And these concepts of death have like a physical form that manifests into the world. And there's a character, let's just say she tamed death, man. She tamed him. <laughs> have that nigga on his knees begging for some coochie. Okay? Shall. Ma, uh, Shaolian Mao is different. She is her. 
She a definition of being her. That's that bitch. She the goat, man. This is not my... This is like It ended up getting dethroned as far as like my favorite image comic book series. You probably know what's going to be next based on me saying that. But make no mistake, East of, East of West is, is extremely special and I highly recommend it. I think it's about 48 issues, 48 issues now, if I remember, if I remember, or not right here, written by, by, by the way, Jonathan Hickman. So Jonathan Hickman didn't make the list technically. Jonathan Hickman, Nick Dragata. Um, the story is kind of complex. It's a sci-fi that's still up in America, but it still never ended. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't explain this anymore without spoiling story details. Monstrous. Y'all, y'all knew this was coming. Y'all knew monsters were coming. This is not a secret. Y'all know I hype monsters. I talk about monsters like every other day. <laughs> By the way, my background is east to west. I, east of west. So you can see how much I care about it. I keep saying east to west because I had a I had a um a a, a, a subscriber whose name was East to West and he, he started throwing me off. But yeah. Damn, I was really I, I thought it was number one. It it, it 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 somewhat changed very recently. My number one has my number one um Image comic was always east to west, but I think I guess I guess you must have take image comics and know image comic is my favorite publisher and assumed it was my favorite. Because my number one is not it's probably it's probably now very obvious, but we'll talk, we'll talk. I'm sold. That's my man's yes. Um is that her getting her back blown out? No, 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 it's not. It's not. It's her being pinned to the wall. Her chest is out though. She took off one of her uniforms, but no, that's not her getting her chest blown out. There's, there's there's some there's some nudity in it. Oh, monstrous, monstrous. I think, I think Marjorie Liu and Santa Takeda are one of the greatest um, duos, like in general. Like they're like one of the best dynamic creative team duos I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Marjorie's ability with the pen is elite, and then Takeda's artwork is absolutely amazing. If you ever seen, if you ever read um, the Tangaroo Palace, they are both working that together. Excuse me. Tangaroo Palace began novel and the Night Eaters. They also did that. But also, which should be a clue to what's next, um, they also work together and I believe I believe it's Target X for for Laura Kinney. But without further ado, Steampunk meets Kaiju. This series is about a young girl, Micah Half Wolf, a young woman with a concerning heritage and ambiguous past. Follow her as she attempts to find answers in a world where humans wage war against oddities, apparitions, all while Micah tries to suppress something deep inside her very being. And like I said, Sana Takeda, Marjorie Liu are both the writers here. Absolutely fantastic. I actually want to see what I wrote over here just to see if I wrote anything different and added on to it because no, I didn't. But man, it's an absolutely special series. The artwork is so fucking beautiful. Like, it's beautiful. Like, I'm about to pull up a random, like, a random monstrous panel. Like, honestly. Like, on God. like, this shit is gorgeous, bro. Like, look at it. Just, just like. Like, look at this. Look at this, man. Like. I don't like the quality of this image, but yeah, like it's just so well drawn. The characters, the the lore, the world building, all of it is very fantastic. It is very fantastic. Literally, the first page goes crazy. Heard the story, got Michael Jordan level world building. Yes, I believe this is one of the stories that I've experienced with actual like good world building. Unlike people who like overhype certain things, like I do think One Piece has good world building and Tower of God, but people overhype it. It's not that good. But number one, this is the reason why I love comic books the way that I do today. Innocence Lost changed the way that I looked at, cared about, and experienced comic books. This is the reason why I hate I hate the Log I don't hate the Logan movie from the standpoint that I don't think it's a bad film. But the reason that I could never get behind the Logan film is because I think. X-23 has one of the greatest superhero origin stories of all time. I believe that. I really do. It's so special how the story is told and then how it ends with this bitter sweetness and then how it extends into Target X where she actually meets her technical biological father, Wolverine. Logan. 
what's his, what's Doki's real name? James James Howlett. I forgot his I, I forgot his actual name, but yeah, like this this origin story. Um, again, it was very special to me, and I remember reading it, and my, my I couldn't believe what I was reading as like a young teenager or whatever I was, and I think this was the moment I really had like a super elevated respect for comics and graphic novels, and this is and it's never really not been my favorite comic book, or at least run. But I always kind of struggle placing it because I'm like, does this, this, this count as something you could put here because it's just a comic book run? Because there's a lot of X-23 stuff that I think is pretty mid, but yeah. I, 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 on any given day, I might say Monstrous is my all-time favorite, though. So I can't fully be trusted with this top three. It's secretly kind of interchangeable. But as of right now, I'm confident putting this there because of what it did to me in terms of how I like to look at comics. So yeah. Robert Jordan? respect that um the first bit goes crazy yeah it's really good so that's my list guys so we got innocence loss monstrous east of west low scott pilgrim tokyo ghost clean room american vampire habibi invincible sex criminal shout out rat queen seven to eternity saga why the last man pretty deadly sunstone deadly class empowered frostbite Morning Glories, Sun Bakery, Death Vigil, Blankets, The Realm, Paper Girls, Killer Be Killed, Black Sad, Mechadet You, Skyward, U52 Batgirl Run by Gail Simone, and then my Black Science was my um my number one. I haven't done a bet rest written no. But also just to clarify something, just so you guys know, this is purely based on favoritism. I think sometimes when I get comments, like after the fact, when it's on YouTube and stuff, people like this is I don't make lists like this trying to be impartial and unbiased. First of all, we're not we're not unfeeling robots. Your socialization, psychology, life experiences, political leanings, and things that you think will always filter how you see something through your own personal lens. Therefore, being truly impartial and, 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 and unbiased is not a thing that I think human beings have the capable of being when they talk about art and storytelling, and things like music. That doesn't mean I don't think there are things like, are you a good artist or not? Good storyteller or not? And things of that nature. Don't misunderstand. If someone said, Naya, can you one day make a list of what you think are the 10 greatest manga, but try to be as impartial, as unbiased, and as objective as you can be, it would be night and day different from my top 10 favorite manga. Because as much as I like to criticize, to critique, criticize, and look at things through an intellectual lens, I never forget to have fun. Sometimes, you're like, why am I reading this? The bitches look good. Why are you reading this? Style of Resumptions. Why are you reading this? Yo, that guy has a cool sword. I've never, I don't, I don't, I don't let it ru um, uh, ruin my enjoyment and not have, and not like not have fun. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Top five will be read next by next year. Habibi two, nice, nice stream. I'm definitely gonna read this. Read these. Uh, yeah, top ten best written portal. I have not done. I have, I have a smut what thing kind of in the works. T tomorrow's stream is gonna be waifus, um, so to speak, if you will, or like fictional crushes, I suppose. Um, I could do that, but again, the month ends. In the month ends on the thirtieth. I said, I said September is the list month. So in October, I'm moving on. I don't mind still making lists and doing them sporadically, but I'm not going to just do them tomorrow or do them the next day. Tomorrow, waifu list. The day after that, anime manga, anime and or manga, and then anime and or manga. I'm sorry, anime, I think on 29th, manga on the, 20, on the 30th, or vice versa. So that should be very fun and interesting. But yeah, man, this is my list, bro. Hope you guys like that. I hope you enjoyed it. Again. There's a lot of things I left off on this list that I really wanted to be there. Wayward was one of them. Wayward didn't end up making the cut. I like I like Nail Biter a lot. Nail Biter is a series about a, a town. This one, this one place. I think it's called Buck Buckaroo somewhere or somewhere, bro. They're just like an un and un a never ending supply of serial killers in that town, and it's like, why do serial killers always originate from here? Nail biter is pretty cool. I heard it continued, and if that didn't move me, it probably should have stopped. But Wayward is, in a lot of ways, I would say an American comic book, American manga, only at least from the standpoint that it takes place in Japan. 
they speak in Japanese, and you'll see like tengus and kappas and things of that nature. So it was always like my American manga in a way. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I honestly, Kick Ass didn't come to mind when I was making this list. I didn't write it down, so I don't know where I would put it. I think it's really good though. What I've read. I haven't experienced all of it. Maybe I should do a, a kick-ass read and get back to you on that. But I like, I like it. I like it. Rip the arcs list. I'll, I'll, I'll do the arcs list as early as I can in October, if, if, if that's fair. I'll, I, I, I have, I have them written down. I haven't made the visuals for them yet, but I have them written down. But I, I, I'll make sure I do that. But yeah, man, this is, this is it here. I do want to show you guys a couple of things. So, just so you can see Wayward, let me let me see if I can find it down here. Blah blah boop blah boop boop body ba ba booty beep beep ba boop ba 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 g g g g g. Made man's pretty cool too, by the way. There's clean room. You can see some of the stuff on my list out that are here. Bounty. What the? What, I forgot what I was looking for. Oh, by the way, monstrous, beautiful shit. You see how Marsh with the monstrous Scott the Pilgrim. Yes, Stella Kane. He's the same picture. Invincible, obviously. Death Vigil. Why the last man? What the hell was I looking for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wayward. <laughs> oh, oh, well, this is this is not the best picture I could find. But yeah, this it, it, it's 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 here. But okay, here's what I'll do. Um. I'll show you guys some of my articles a little bit so you can kind of get a better image. Um I have to go I have to, I have to put blurs online image comics. These are all these are all written by me. Just so you guys know. These are all these are all my one articles. Oh, elsewhere. So this this is this is the shit I was reading from and in, 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 to some degree in some capacity. I can probably make this a bit a bit smaller so that shit fits better at this point. Um Yeah. I used to um I used to work for this for this for this website. You can see some you can see um Invincible on here, Mech Cadet U. When did I write this too? I don't even know what day I wrote this. I don't know what day this came out. It doesn't it doesn't say here. Is it on this list then? Is it this one? There's Sex Criminals, Tokyo Ghost, Death Vigil, another one, another Death Vigil panel. If you want to see like a, the artwork of um Sajic. Really beautiful artwork, man. Really nice. Really nice. Join the Death Squad, man. Join the Death Squad. There's Paper Girls. Oh, here's some archery from from Low. You can see some Low. Low is really well drawn. I forgot to talk about the artistry of Low. I can't remember how, what he does. It's some weird painting style that he uses, but it's really good. This was the background of the um thing that I used for East and West. Is this, is it not? Is this not? Is it not here? There's Scott Pilgrim. Um, it should be here. Whoa! Is, is this my Gods and Monsters review? Oh my God, bro! This takes me back, family. Look at look at me, dog. Oh my goodness, this might be. You guys don't even know my beginnings, bro. You don't even know the beginnings of the Hemmings lore. Y'all don't even know. Um, Rocket Girl, cool. Okay, there's there's a picture I'm looking for. I think I think it's cool. So like, all you think most of the things are Japanese. I think she's like half Japanese or Scottish or Irish and stuff. But yeah. Um, I think a lot of you guys, if you're like super manga people, you will like Wayward. It's it's completed last time I checked, but yeah, give it a shot. Give it a look ski, you know. I think the Kick Ass, I think Kick Ass Three has the best ending any comic book I've ever read. I'll have to I'll have to get to that. Definitely taking a Hibibi Low and Deadly Class for my next reads. Nice. Will you ever do comic essays breaking down the themes of your favorite comics? Yes. Video essays are going to be the theme for next year. That's the thing I'm going to do. I'm, I already I already I already know I'm doing one for Monstrous. And probably low because I really want to talk about that despair versus hope theme, Zetsubo versus Kibo. Um, I think I'm going to do stuff for Kubera as well, but that's the I'm 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 actually going to be writing scripts pretty much for the first time. I don't really write scripts. At most, I might think about what I want to say throughout the day, so it's pretty well streamlined in my mind, and I just hit record and I ramble and I talk, or I might have bullet points and stuff, but I don't I don't script anything. I just kind of talk on the top of my head. Like every some people would see a video I'm like this is really well done. Like did you script this? Like I didn't script this. I just started talking, bro. Like I know how to speak more often than not. This is an interesting series too, by the way. Trees was pretty cool. I like trees. I used to like Wicked and Divine, but then I went to complete shit with the artwork is pretty good. Obviously, you see thing, um, thing there. This is also Warning Glories. Another picture here you can see, pretty dope. And uh, you can get another picture of Why the Last Man. So here you guys go there.
As always, I appreciate the Patreon. Shout out to the Patreon gang. Shout out to the CBLs, man. We need y'all here. Y'all be loving bad. I feel it. But shout out to the Priest of Fire, man. Y'all might be the real CBLs because they be loving Brillith. It's Brillith gang till I die. But a big, huge shout out to the Fifth Zen Gods. Shout out to Lazy Dragon, Lucky Rue, Makai, Revenant, Scope, Shoddy to your body, Simi, Ticos, Tino Brown, Zachary Cooper, Zodiac Nemco, Zyler Scotty, 528 AM, Big Abdel, Big Allen, Andrew, Childish New Jabis, Tris, Fairs, and Johnny Rogers. Your support is greatly appreciated. I'm going to be making a subscribe star and put, making a big content push at the end of this year. So hope you guys will continue to support me. I really appreciate it.